please welcome to the stage Associate Front End Director for Bounteous, Ricardo Pereira. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the warm welcome. Uh, my name is Ricardo. Uh, and I'm uh, very excited to share with you what the uh, team and I at Bounteous have learned about uh, developing Shopify themes uh, with the Storefront API and Vue.js. So uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, as mentioned, I'm the uh, Associate Director of Frontend Solutions at Bounteous. Uh, that means I do frontend development, obviously, uh, and I'm also a career coach uh, for our team of uh, frontend developers. Uh, I have a background in UI and UX design. That's how I got uh, started with development myself. Um, and of course, it's important to note that all of the work that I'll be sharing with you here today uh, represents the work of the entire team at uh, Bounteous. Um, Bounteous, uh, of course, uh, creates big picture digital solutions uh, that help uh, leading companies deliver transformational brand experiences. Uh, we offer integrated strategy, design, uh, technology, analytics, and insight, uh, as well as marketing services to Fortune 1000 companies and uh, multinational brands. Uh, we're headquartered in Chicago well, with offices all over North America. Um, our team here in Toronto are Shopify Plus partners. Um, we specialize in custom theme development. Uh, and in fact, uh, our front end uh, team, 50% uh, of them have completed the Shopify theme development certification. So uh, let's dive right in uh, to the topic that I'd like to share with you today. Um, to tackle the topic, uh, we think it's helpful to um, demonstrate two key examples uh, where we've applied these technologies. Uh, they're a load more button and a mini cart. Uh, for each one, um, we'll, uh, we'll show um, a few key things that we've learned, some of the challenges and how, the, um, how using the Storefront API and Vue.js overcame those challenges. Uh, tips for how you can get started with the Storefront API. Uh, and some tricks for getting liquid data into your view components. So we'll start with a simple example, uh, which is a load more button. Uh, on a recent project, uh, we were tasked with building a load more button uh, for our client Shopify blog article listing page. Uh, the intent was to display the five most recent articles and allow the user to click a read more or load more button uh, to display additional articles. Uh, building this solely with Liquid um, wasn't feasible. Um, we couldn't simply paginate the results. Uh, the intent was to show additional content on the existing page. Um, and it wasn't feasible to load all of the articles on page load uh, and then progressively show them. There could be thousands of articles, and of course that would impact performance um, and you know, obviously make it a slower user experience. So the solution was to progressively load more content uh, using the Storefront API. Uh, when the user actions the load more button, uh, a call to the Storefront API is made, uh, requesting only the next batch of articles. Um, this makes each call fast and efficient, uh, loading only what is needed and making it for a smoother user experience. Um, further improvements can even be made to this approach. Um, you can preload, let's say for example, the five subsequent blog articles. Uh, that would mean that uh, the load more button would actually function instantaneously um, with no visible lag to the user. Uh, and furthermore, this is a technique that you can actually apply to a lot of Shopify constructs like uh, collections and orders. Our next example is the mini cart. Um, it's a little bit more involved, um, but it shows what's possible with the Storefront API and Vue.js. Uh, more and more of our clients are requesting mini carts on their Shopify stores. Um, they enhance the customer journey uh, by making cart management uh, dynamic and real-time uh, and friction-free. So we first set out to build a mini cart uh, using Liquid. Um, but the problem is that uh, every update to the page incurs a page load, uh, so it feels um, uh, slow and cumbersome. Next, uh, we turn to the Cart Ajax API, uh, because it can tell you what's in the cart uh, and obviously manipulate those items. Uh, but it can't always tell you additional information that you may want to display with those items. Uh, let's say, for example, tags or additional images. So naturally, our next step was to turn to the product Ajax API. Um, it can tell you everything you need to know about, the, about a product, uh, but that's part of the problem. You're requesting a lot of data that you may not need. 
Um, and um, furthermore, uh, you're making a round trip to the server uh, for every unique product in your cart. So it's going to slow down the more products are in the cart, uh, and it also makes it cumbersome for you to manage with your front end code. So the solution was to use the cart Ajax API and the storefront API in tandem and to mer merge the results on the front end using uh, Vue.js. So we'll break this down into the three steps uh, that you can take to achieve this. Um, so the first step is to um, use the cart Ajax ABI to maintain a, an accurate and real-time representation uh, of the user's cart on the front end. So anytime they actually make an action uh, that involves the cart, uh, that's used to uh, maintain a, a very accurate representation. Uh, second, um, use the storefront API uh, to fetch only the information that you don't already know about the items in your cart. Um, this is where the capabilities of GraphQL really shine uh, because you can request only the fields that you don't already know about your products. Um, and uh, you can grab information about multiple products in one single call uh, in one round trip to the server. And, and lastly, you use uh, Vue.js to um, build and maintain a re reactive representation of those items and to combine those results on the front end. Um, so the result is a dynamic, uh, real-time user interface for customers to manage their cart. Uh, it's enriched with the data that your customers need uh, to make informed decisions. Uh, and it keeps customers in a friction-free flow of shopping as opposed to making multiple trips to the cart. So uh, what does Shopify's storefront API solve for us? Um, it allows us to pull only the information that we need about multiple products or collections or articles in one single call. Uh, it reduces the amount of round trips uh, that you need to make to the server for that information. Uh, and fewer round trips obviously means uh, a smoother, more uh, responsive uh, user experience. So why did we choose uh, Vue.js? Um, there are a lot of great alternatives out there, obviously, uh, React and Angular being the big ones. Um, the short answer is that Vue.js worked well for our team. Um, it, um, it's actually very syntactically similar to Liquid. Um, it has very similar bindings and even filters. Um, so that meant that traditional theme developers uh, were, uh, had a very easy time to onboard with the technology. Uh, and then React developers could also apply much of their existing knowledge as well. And uh, we felt that um, also this kind of helped to address some of the challenges about front end divide. Uh, that's been a topic that's obviously in front end development that has been a friend of mine in recent months. Um, so it meant that uh, both types of front end developers could really bring uh, all of their skills to the table. Uh, it's important to note obviously all of these frameworks uh, provide largely the same functionality. Uh, they'll help you uh, manage state, uh, merge information uh, from multiple data sources and APIs. Uh, and to react to that data uh, without a lot of glue code in your front end. Um, so really you should choose what's best for your team based on experience and preference. Uh, so here are some tips for how you can get started in your projects. Uh, a great way to get started of course is Shopify's Getting Started Guide. Uh, it will give you all of the information that you need in order for you to generate a storefront access token uh, which you'll need to access the endpoint. Uh, and also links to a great repository uh, of examples that you can use to springboard into your own project. Uh, next, um, get comfortable with uh, GraphQL using a client called GraphQL. Uh, it allows you to compose queries uh, and see the results in real time. Uh, and one very interesting aspect of GraphQL, of course, is that it's self-documenting. Um, so it will give you really helpful tips as you're crafting those queries um, before you move them into your code base. Uh, another aspect of well, as well is uh, you, it's, it's okay to start small. Uh, a lot of um, tutorials that you may see for front-end frameworks uh, will kind of assume that you're building one giant single-page application, uh, but we found it's totally fine to just sprinkle in just a few components on your uh, Shopify themes uh, where, that, where you may need that extra functionality. Uh, and as your application grows, um, and you'll have maybe several sibling um, uh, components on your page as opposed to one giant component tree. Uh, we find it useful to use Vuex to, to um, perform state management. 
so that means that all of your uh, business and API logic can live in Vuex. Uh, and all of your front end components uh, can be mostly about just reacting to that data uh, and user interaction. So it keeps them uh, nice and simple as well. Uh, another thing that we found as well is, uh, especially if, like, let's say, for example, on a minicart, you're mixing things like uh, an AJAX API and the storefront API, um, the IDs for uh, products or any uh, Shopify resource will be different between them. Um, so in the uh, AJAX APIs, you'll get a numeric key, uh, but in the storefront APIs, you'll get a uh, base64 encoded string. Um, the good news is that you can actually convert between the two. Um, the uh, encoded string is a uh, version of a GID URL, uh, and you can use the uh, JavaScript A to B and B to A functions in order to help you convert between the two. Um, next, uh, yeah, consider uh, reducing the amount of round trip effects uh, by um, uh, bringing in useful information from Liquid on page load into your components. Um, so what this will help do is as your components are loading up and before you've had a chance to go to the storefront API to grab additional information, uh, this helps uh, to hydrate them with useful information uh, so that you have something useful to show to the user uh, and so that your interface doesn't look blank. Uh, a great way by doing this is by encoding um, liquid objects as JSON uh, in script tags on your page. Uh, and then um, in when your front end code instantiates, you load and parse that JSON, uh, and then you can instantiate your view component using the props data attribute. Um, and so what this does is it passes in that data as props, much like they would be receiving from a parent component. Uh, and that means it's instantly available to, uh, to render. So um, yeah, so consider the storefront API and Vue.js uh, when building dynamic uh, friction-free customer journeys on Shopify. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I'll also be outside taking questions if anybody uh, wants to uh, later. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.